Yes, I'm going to talk about the, the post office trior, sometimes called the, the post office scandal. This was about um, the post office in the UK. Um, they obviously deal with selling stamps, but they're also part of everyday life in the UK. So they deal with driving licences, um, taxes, um, they are a bank for many people, they pay out pensions, and so there's actually a lot of money flowing through these branches. And it turned out that um, there were many people who were running these branches who were accused of stealing money or at least losing money, sometimes tens of thousands of pounds. Some were prosecuted and a few even went to jail. And it turned out that Horizon, the computer system that the post office use, does have a lot of bugs and these bugs could have been responsible for some of these losses. And so the people who are running these branches, called sub-postmasters, largely won that case. Now, we never got to the bottom of exactly what happened to these individuals. The court case was settled before that stage of the trial progressed. But we do know the sorts of problems that affected Horizon and the sort of challenges that there are in building a system of this type. This was a huge news story uh, in the UK. I listened to a great podcast, which I'll probably link in the description from the BBC, explaining a little bit about some of these people and what had happened to them. But they didn't really explain what sorts of things went wrong. This money's gone missing. You know, you're going to jail because you've lost this money. Where was this money? Yeah. <laughs> Did the money exist? Mm. Yeah, so um, what Horizon is is an accounting system. And if you could imagine how you might build something like this. Let's suppose you take simple case where you have a shop and they just have a bucket which they use for keeping the money and then a bucket which they use for looking after their products. We can call these stamps because it's a post office. Each time someone takes in some money they put the money in the bucket and then they give out some of these stamps or whatever they're trying to sell. That works. Like this is how you might run a lemonade stall or something like that. It's okay, but it's got a number of problems. So one is that you don't actually know how much money you've got. And also you don't know how much stock you've got. So you might want to do something better than that. Now let's build in some raker keeping. So if you're running a more sophisticated lemonade stand, you might do this. Here you have a table and then in this table you put in your sales and you might sell one pound worth of stamps and then you might sell six pounds worth of stamps and at the end of the day you add this up and then you find out that you have earned seven pounds for that day. So again that's, that's good but what this doesn't tell you is the amount of stock you have. So what you might then do is add another column to this and if you start the day with a hundred stamps then you sell one pound worth of stamps and if each stamp is worth one pound now you've got 99 pounds and then you sell six pounds worth of stamps. Now you go from 99 down to 93. And then at the end of the day, you've got 93 stamps. And then once that starts getting close to zero, then you can start saying, oh, okay, maybe it's time to buy some more. There's still some problems here. One is the people who are running these desks in the, the post office are sometimes not employees of the, the post office. And maybe you want to see that they're not making mistakes. So you can actually build two books. So you've still got your sale and still your, your stock, but then you've got a separate book, which is the, the stock at the, the central office. This could start off with zero, and then you give out 100 stamps. So this is now down 100, and that is up 100. And then at the end of the day, maybe the person who's running this decides that they don't want to keep all those stamps. They're going to keep three of them, so they're going to hand back 90. So then this goes down to three and this goes down to plus 90. And then the total of this is going to be minus 10. We now get this a nice property that if we add up all the totals, seven pounds worth of stamps, three left in the stock, and we've got minus 10 over here, that equals zero. And in fact, it should always equal zero. If you do this thing called double entry accounting, and that's the check that is used. But what happened in these sub postmaster cases is it didn't add up to zero, it added up to less than zero. And the way the contract was set up between the post office headquarters and the individual post offices was that the people running the post offices were responsible for this amount of money. So it looked like money had disappeared 
and the post office accused them of putting this in their back pocket and then they had to pay this back in some cases sometimes they went to jail um, sometimes both you can see how this could go wrong quite quickly in quite a huge way and, and be very difficult to work out where it went wrong yeah it's, it's millions of transactions a day computers don't make mistakes though right isn't that the isn't that the thing? Yeah, so that's um, roughly what the, the post office said, that um, this is a simple problem. Um, it's uh, easy for computers to, to do the right thing. It's just adding and subtracting, and the numbers are not very hard, really. If you look at other videos in computer file, there's far more sophisticated problems, and computers seem to do reasonably well at that. But there's a few challenges. I mentioned that the numbers should always add up to zero, and the reason they always add up to zero is for every positive number you add, into the system, there's a negative number that you're taking away. And these two things have got to happen um, always. But if, for example, the computer fails when it's doing half of that transaction, then you get a shortfall. Um, and this is an, a known problem in computing. And what you want is something called transactions. And in a transaction, either everything happens in a transaction, so in addition and subtraction both happen, or none of it happens. And if it doesn't happen, you, you're, you know about it and you can deal with it. So sometimes the acronym ACID comes up. So this stands for atomicity. So that means that it can't be broken up. So either all of it happens or none of it happens. And there's consistency. And that is that the properties you want are always true. So for example, you want things to always add up to, to zero. You want everything to stay in synchronization. There's also isolation. And this means that no matter what's happening in one part of the system, it shouldn't cause failures in other parts of the system. Because these post offices are, are not just one computer sitting in a desk. There's the computer, there's the backup, there might be several desks, there's a post office headquarters computer and, and all that. And then durability is the, the final part. And that means that once something has happened, you actually know it's happened, it's definitely happened. So you, you don't need to then go back and, and check whether it has accidentally been undone by something else going on in the system. So this is what the post office system should have. And it did have measures to try to do this, but over the millions of transactions it's doing every day, some of these things went wrong. If we take an example of um, atomicity. So what this means is that things happen exactly one time, once and, and only once. But sometimes things went wrong. We had a case that was brought up in the trial where you had two desks and these have the computer system but they've also got a drawer full of money and for, for whatever reason it's sometimes necessary to, to move money between them because maybe one's paying out most of the time, one's taking money in a lot of the time so that they get imbalanced and you want to move some money about. So they moved the money in uh, between these two terminals but then the computer recorded one, then something went wrong and then it triplicated. So now the computer thinks there's twice as much money in this terminal than there should be. And that triggers uh, one of these imbalances. So that's atomicity. The other one is consistency. Consistency means that everything matches. So if something happens at one side, something happens at the other side. And again, that went wrong. Horizon is one system, but like most big systems, it's actually built out of lots of components. So there's one component for actually running the um, disk that the sub postmasters and their staff interact with but there's the other one for actually keeping track of the money it's a standard accounting package and horizon dealing with the counters should stay in sync with the um, accounting system but it turned out in one case it didn't so if a user was um, dealing with one system and then they press cancel at just the wrong time then that transaction would appear in Horizon, but it would not appear in the accounting system. So again, you've got the case of you've got a, an inconsistency that can show up as a shortfall, and then the sub postmaster can get blamed for that. Next one is, is isolation. That means that if something happens on one system, it shouldn't interfere with something on the, the other system. And again, we saw the case of where that went wrong. So here, a sub postmaster was um, printing out a report showing how much money was taken in, how much stock was used in, a, in one day. And then if in the process of printing out this report, another counter in this um, branch did a transaction, that transaction would not appear in the report. So again, you'd have something happening to the stock, something happening to the money, but not showing up in the report. And again, you've got one of these uh, failures of consistency. And then the final one is durability. So that means that once something happens, it's actually going to happen and there's no way of undoing it. 
So again, th that's been seen to go wrong. So here there was a customer who um, withdrew some money from their bank, but you can do this in the post office. And the transaction seemed to go through fine. A receipt was printed, the customer got the cash, um, but then the receipt printed out recovery failed. So recovery is the thing that Horizon does and, and many other um, systems do when something has gone wrong with one of these properties and they then want to um, correct the error. But that didn't work for whatever reason, maybe a hardware failure, and then the transaction just disappeared. So Horizon showed that the money was never withdrawn from the bank, but the customer walked away with the money um, and now you've got a shortfall. In this case, the sub-postmaster was very tenacious. The sub-postmaster um, found out um, where this customer was, um, maybe they knew each other, and um, got them to check their bank statement. And then it turned out that the money had left the customer's bank account, it just never appeared in Horizon. And so the customer obviously didn't really want to give this money back. For, from their perspective, they'd taken out the money, they'd received the cash, but there was a shortfall at that branch. And because of all the evidence the sub-postmaster collected, they were able to sort the situation out. But maybe in different circumstances, it wouldn't be as easy. And they seem like such simple, simple problems. I mean, what if, if something is... There must have been logs or something. Were there logs that, that Horizon was keeping? Could they, you know, could they not check the logs, as it were? There are logs in the system. And there's logs both in the, the sub-postmaster's um, domain, so the their branch. There's also logs um, in post office headquarters. And that actually makes things harder um, because now you've got a distributed system and distributed systems make everything harder. So imagine you've got your post office counter over here. So this is inside the post office, but actually there's going to be um, probably more than one terminal in these cases and these are connected up with a network and then you've got the post office headquarters over here and then they've got their computer system for most of horizon history this was before the internet was commonly used and so they were not permanently connected to each other over the internet they are now what happens is that each of these post office terminals is networked to each other and that's permanently connected but the connection to the headquarters only happens every so often and the way that they try to say synchronize is they have logs. Each branch uh, computer writes out a log entry. And then what they try to do is then make sure that everything has exactly the same log. So they'll copy them over. So that entry will go there. Um, that entry will go over here. And so by the end of this process, they will all have the, the same entries. And that's a problem called consensus. And that's actually quite hard to, to solve, even in a fairly theoretical way. When you build this on real hardware with um, connections that fail, hardwares that fail, uh, then it becomes even more challenging. And a pattern that seems to have come up in this court case is that problems tended to occur when there was some failure, either communications failure or a hardware failure. So that might well have been a problem in the way that this consensus algorithm is working in making sure the logs on each of these terminals are synchronized. So as well as um, doing the, the customer facing things like printing receipts um, and helping the sub postmaster keep track of things, the Horizon system and associated infrastructure also keeps logs of modifications. And some of those modifications are perfectly legitimate. So you might be doing some transactions or you might be fixing problems. But if there's the wrong sort of modification, then you end up with a, a serious problem. It could be this would be what someone does to, to hide the fact that they're stealing some money. So what the sort of thing you want from an audit log is you want to make sure that you know exactly when something has happened. You want to know exactly what they did. You want to know who they are. You also want to make sure that not too many people have access to the system. It's to be sort of a, on a need to know basis. And Horizon does have that sort of thing. And this is the evidence that actually was used to prosecute the sub postmasters who the post office was claiming had stolen some money. What they said is that at this particular time, um, someone using this terminal with this password um, made this transaction and that transaction was fraudulent. And one of the things that the post office said um, in court and, and also um, in parliament when they were questioned is that 
only the sub-postmaster in the branch or only the branch computer can modify these logs. And this was a, a very contentious point in the trial. Um, there were some fairly dramatic scenes about how this was um, discussed, but it turned out there were actually quite a few problems with this log. In terms of when, um, sometimes the wrong time went into these log entries, so that could cause some confusion about when um, a person was actually in a branch if they are blamed for something. There was also a, a question about what had happened, because in some cases these logs were not actually correct. And then there was who was actually doing it. So another disclosure was that actually a lot of people um, working for the post office and their subcontractors had access to the system more than probably should have. And so they in fact did have the ability to remotely modify the system um, and the, the logs that they kept of when this would be happening and how this would be happening were not as good as you would hope. Um, and also it could make it appear that it was a sub postmaster who had done something when actually it was a, either an automatic change or a manual change that was done by someone else. So uh, eventually the, the truth came out in this trial um, and this was yet another thing that uh, made it dramatically more difficult for the post office to say that actually it was a sub postmaster's responsibility when there was a shortfall in a branch. So this one goes all the way over to here, this one goes over to here and so, and, and so on. Remember this is going to be an iterative process and what we want to do is move these things around and we will be and there will be instructions about transferring this money back to the right person. But actually that's all fake. The money has not appeared in your account. 